your 30s. I mean, these are some of the things you should be thinking about. So I want y'all to, I want you to just give you a little information about that when you get that. Okay, so I graduated from Simeon High School in 1990. Y'all see what this shirt say right here? Mm -hmm. 1990. You just don't start something the day you think about it. There has to be a preparation stage before you actually do it. So in 1988, I was thinking about what I was going to be doing in 1990. So I graduated from high school. There was people who came to my high school. And you know what? They were positive people. And they came, and I sat in the same chair you sat in. And they came and spoke to me just like I'm speaking to you. And that was the start of what motivated me to start wanting to do community service work in my community. I was particularly interested with Inglewood and Gresham because these were the neighborhoods that I grew up in. So when I came out of school, I wanted to take my rapping. I wanted to take a few other type of um, artistry and I wanted to tour the schools. And I wanted to use my hip hop, I wanted to use my rap to change the world, one heart, one mind, one verse at a time. That was our logo, that was our slogan. So as I began to get older, I was always taught that if you work for someone, Learn everything you can about the business that you are involved in because one day you might want to open up a business for yourself. And so I began to work at places like Dairy Queen. I began to work at other places in Ford City Mall until one day the president of Rogers and Holland's Jewelry Store walked through the mall and he saw me speaking to the people who were walking through the mall. And he said, young man, can I talk to you for a minute? Here's a car. I'm the president of Rogers and Harlins. If you're ever interested in working for Rogers and Harlins, give me a call. That's how it all started. I gave him a call. I eventually became working for Rogers and Harlins. I'm working and I'm doing my poet organization in the public school system. I got to the point where I learned about jewelry so much. 24 karat gold, pure gold, 18 karat gold, 14 karat gold, 10 karat gold, sterling silver. 92.5% pure silver, that's what sterling silver is. I learned what a fil uh, filigree chain was, what a Gucci chain was, what uh, brush gold was, all these other terms. And you know what I did? I took my income tax money and I began to invest it and open up my own business. I opened up my first business, night, November the 15th, 1993 on 64th and Halston. It was called New Jack Jewelry. And I don't know if y'all ever seen the movie New Jack City, but I love that movie. So I named my business New Jack Jewelry. And so I began to get real successful in business. I began to open up clothing stores on 79th and Damon, 79th and Loomis, DeAndre's No Limit. And then I started to attract attention from those on the conscious side or those on the political side. And I got a visit from a couple of people, community activists, and they said, uh, Mr. Hawthorne, you should consider running for Alderman. I sat down, I had meetings, and I wanted to know what it would entail, but I know politics in Chicago is dirt. So in the year of 2000, I threw my hat in the ring for Alderman of the 17th Ward. I was the first hip hop artist in Chicago to run for a political office. I was 28 years old when I ran for Alderman. I didn't win, I came in second place. It was four people that ran. I came in second place, but I started to change the thinking of young people in my community. They thought that the only way you could make it was to be a rapper or to be a basketball player. I showed them a young person that looked just like them, that spoke just like them, that went to the same high schools and grammar schools just like they went to, that can sit on stage and debate against those who had more education than me and win mm -hmm. in that debate. Why? Because I'm passionate for my people. I want to see it succeed. And sometimes your passion will trump education. Learn how to speak well. That will get you further than your education a lot of times. Your presentation. You never get a second chance. Everybody say you never get a second chance. Yeah. Never get a second chance. To make a first impression. To make a first impression. So when I first walked through that door right there, you said he too cool for school. Didn't you say that? Yeah. There was something about me when I walked through that door that made her make a comment about my presence, about my appearance. 
So I ran for alderman. When I ran for alderman, the shit hit the fan. My cars were towed. My phones were tapped. Hmm. Private investigators were following me mm -hmm. to and from work. They were taking pictures of my name on my doorbell. They took me to court. And they said, well, we want him to get kicked off the ballot. He don't live where he say he lived. Look, we got pictures of him at 4.30 in the morning driving south on Kedzie on 83rd Street. We got pictures of a doorbell in another location with his last name on it. Private investigators. Don't think that you're going to be part of something conscious of a movement and somebody not follow you or investigate you. Needless to say, I won all the court cases. But their job was really not to win. It was to tie me up in court so I couldn't campaign going door to door. So I learned a lot as I was running for alderman. I learned a lot as an entrepreneur. And that has continued in my adult years where now I'm still active in the community where we're leading marches. Not just against blue on black crime. Y'all know what I mean by blue on black crime, right? Police officers. But also against black on black crime. So while they were downtown marching, closing down the stores, mm -hmm. there was right. a group of us marching in the hood, shutting down 79th and Cottage Road. Yes. Yep. Saying that while we're talking about these officers out there, there's something that we must do. Everybody say there's something that we must do. There's something that we must do. And it all starts right here. We got to talk to one another. We got to encourage one another. Because somebody in this room is depressed. Somebody in this room is down. Somebody in this room come from a single parent home and either they miss their mama or they miss their dad. And they acting out because of their circumstances at home. And somebody in this circle got an attitude problem. And somebody in this circle, parent tell them every day, watch your mouth. Why you got an attitude? And somebody in this circle saying, I ain't got no attitude. See, I'm hitting some people right now, I can tell. I'm, I'm hitting some people right now. I can tell I'm hitting some people right now. I got a 19-year-old and he act the same way. Somebody in the circle smoking loud. See, everybody got quiet now. <laughs> loud ain't nothing like ain't that it? regular marijuana. I want y'all to know that. Tell them what it is. Come on. It's an addiction. It's messing up marriages. It's messing up lives. It's messing up relationships. See, I don't understand that many people your age can't get a job because they can't pass no damn drug test. Hmm. You qualify for the job. You can get past the interview process, but when they ask you to pee in the cup, all them little herbal things that y'all try to take, they got something to detect that too. So you're not smarter than the system. How can you be smarter than the system and you're only 16? 17, 18 years old, these people been here for 40, 50, 60 years. They've seen you before. So the best thing for you to do is just do the right thing. Because when you try to do all these little slick things to get ahead in life, all you're doing is really wasting your time. When you could have been here, you right here trying to figure out how can I change things, how can I flip things, render unto Caesar what is his. Do what you got to do to make it in life. And that's all I'm saying right here. Everybody say, do what I got to do, do, do to make it in life. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, are y'all ready for the first poet test? Can, Can she flow? Y'all ready for the first poet test? Can, Can she, she flow? Y'all already know. Please put your hands together for Kylie Brown, y'all. Kylie Brown. Kylie Brown. Hey, John Moon, where does your power lie? As you move across the southern sky, you took my baby way too soon. What have you done, Cajun Moon? I sat on the floor at a party in my cocktail dress. You sat behind me on a white leather couch and braided my afro. You placed your hand upon my chin and kissed my forehead as I fell in love in between the cornrows. 
and you began to hum a tune in a dialect that only I could understand. And all fell silent as they realized that this, this was our way of making love in public. Because you loved me completely between the evaporation and the steam, for we are a complicated equation, a calculation without me. So fill me with the seeds of redemption and allow me to grant you the soul that you reaped. That is just an excerpt from one of my poems I call Cajun Moon. I 